when I read in the newspaper that I volunteered. I, I, it's the truth. I read in the newspaper that I was volunteered. I had an appointment the next day with Bishop Hoban. We did go to the missions uh, that uh, fast, but I was delighted. It was adventure that it enticed a lot of us, I'm sure. He's living better. When I saw his, uh, his wife and the family the first time, he lived in a house that was uh, only made out of sticks. You know, it was just a grass roof. And uh, I don't know whether he'd be offended by saying it, but one of the things that impressed me so terribly was that uh, the kids were sitting on the floor, uh, and the pigs were there, and they were both all fighting over the same tortillas. For 50 years, the good people of the Diocese of Cleveland have supported our mission in El Salvador. The special second collection for the El Salvador mission is the weekend of January 31st and February 1st. And we ask once again for your generous support. We had something like 32 local areas we would go to, which went all around a volcano. I couldn't do now what I used to do then, which was climb up one side of the volcano and go down the other or uh, travel in by jeep to uh, over hills and bumps and to uh, far outlying areas to reach some of these places which on occasion would some trips would take you all day long so i remember the first visit i came was just so overwhelming uh, the heat the dust it was during the dry season and uh, and so it was just so overpowering that way and of course it, i don't think any place you go you expect the degree of poverty that you, that you first run into when you first come. Cleveland priests serving in El Salvador have the daunting task of bringing the sacraments to the people, a joyful but often logistically challenging undertaking. One of the things that was so necessary was for us not only to maintain the main church but to go out to them. Uh, they are lucky if they come in once a month to go to the market into the town. So to be able to go to Mass on a Sunday or, uh, or something like that, it was just impossible for them. But as we would go out in each of our communities and they would have liturgy out there and then begin to understand, I think that was so important, to, to the outreach. So we have uh, in all of our, like uh, the parish of La Libertad, over 42 churches, 42 church buildings where we go out to them every month. On December 2nd, 1980, the war gained worldwide attention when two Cleveland missionaries, Ursuline's sister Dorothy Kazel and lay worker Jean Donovan, along with two Marinol sisters, Edith Ford and Maura Clark, were murdered. You know, there, there is a spiritual dimension to being a martyr that goes way beyond what we can really quantify. There, there was nothing else that sent the message out as much as seeing those, the bodies of those women pulled from the graves. It uh, riveted the attention of Americans here and that shocked the world. And nobody really cared about El Salvador before that. So it was in their death that, uh, that the world became aware of the horrific things that were happening there with impunity for those people. And I think that that is what caused things to turn around. We would try to, to, continue, to give the people courage, to, to keep working, don't, don't be frightened, you know, to know that God's with you. And they would say to us, you know, Father, you know, if uh, things get real bad, you guys are going to jump on a plane and go home, and we're stuck here. But then when Dorothy and Jean and, and Eden Mora and the, the Marinol sisters and so on, you know, gave their lives in service to the poor here, we came back to work with them and they, they would say to us, you're now one of us. The mission has been a blessing for us. Uh, the Diocese of Cleveland. That's the first thing that you can say, that I think it's always been the nature of the church to be missionary. Plus the whole global thing, the connection of not just being here in Cleveland and knowing just the church in Cleveland, but knowing that Jesus came to teach all nations and that I was a part of that whole thing and they were teaching me that. I will never ever be able 
to be able to repay or even to be able to express how grateful I am for those five years that I spent there. I'd hope that Cleveland would continue to bless us with the presence of their missionaries for a long time. Only God knows how long. But I was thinking, I hope that we will not just be completing 50 years, but also 100 years and more 100th anniversaries. I can't see our diocese without the mission of Cleveland. We would miss that presence. through a history of civil war in that uh, country that speaks to the fact that, first of all, we're still there. The Salvador mission after 50 years has really turned into what I believe is reverse mission. I think we originally went to El Salvador because there was a need based on the fact there are so many Catholic Sophie priests. These days, our presence there is who we are called to be as mission from our diocese of Cleveland. Literally, I think we are uh, diocese that needs El Salvador more than, than El Salvador needs us. The Diocese of Cleveland has been serving the people of El Salvador for 50 years and their spiritual needs are greater than ever. Please continue the tradition of support the weekend of January 31st and February 1st during the special second collection for our mission in El Salvador.